Assalamu alaikum. Today we will continue our lessons to read Arabic and at the beginning we're going to have as usual exercise to practice tanween. This exercise is going to be like that. A word will be pronounced. You're going to guess the last letter of the word. What kind of tanween does it have? Is it tanween with fatha? Tanween with dhamma? Or tanween with kasra? Or it doesn't have tanween at all? Okay? Three seconds will be count down and then an answer will be pronounced. I hope you get them all correct. So concentrate and let's start. Kitaban. Bait. Talimun. Zubdan. Muhibbin Thauban Darsun Kareeman Jamalun خمرا جندي حوت تمر I hope you all did well now we have a new lesson. Our lesson today is called Shadda. As Shadda, if we add it, Alif and Lam. Shadda in Arabic is double letter in English. Yes, not all the double letters have the same sound and the same way of sound, but usually the one I'm going to tell you right now is the one that we mean Shadda. This word here is pronounced attack and the reason for this is the two t's it is not all the time two t's pronounced t i know but i had to give you an example from your own language so this sound doubling the letter in english in arabic called shadda and shadda as a literal meaning it means to pull something. Shadda as verb means he pulls something, to pull. Okay? And shadda in Arabic means to double the letter. Any shadda in Arabic, actually it's two letters. Like, for example, this word, qadama, qadam, or this word, qaddama. I doubled D. It's two D's, in fact, but I doubled it, so it become Qaddama. And as usual, I have Shadda with Fatha, Shadda with Dhamma, and Shadda with Kisra, the same as Tanween. As we said before, Fatha and Dhamma and Kisra control all the sound of Arabic. Okay, here comes the very logical question. When do we use Shadda? What requires Shadda? Actually, nothing. How? Shadda is required because this word originally has Shadda. That's it. So, you are required to know how Shadda looks like. That's number one. And how to transfer what you hear as Shadda to Shadda in writing. And when you read this symbol to double the letter. But originally, why this word got shadda, it is not something you will be responsible for, neither will you be asked for. It's something not in your hand, not in your language, we're not asked for that. 
So don't bother your mind about the reason behind why Shadda came in the first place. No, it's Shadda and we have to do it like this. Okay. The symbol of Shadda, as we saw, looks like three, but it's flipped over on its back in English. So it's all the time like this. All the time. And when Shadda is written in Arabic, it needs some concentration to know how it's written. Shadda with Fatha. Fatha is written above Shadda, as usual, because Fatha is always above. And Shadda with Dhamma. Dhamma is also above the letter, so it's above Shadda. And finally, Shadda with Kasra. Kasra will be under Shadda because all the time Kasra is under the letter that it modifies. Okay, in Quran, if you are or some of you are Muslim, the way it's written is somehow different. Actually, some rules of writing Quran are different, but we already know them. Like some rules in Mad, some rules in writing Sukun, the shape of Sukun, and some rules, for example, of Shadda. And we will expose those rules later in another class, inshallah. But now, in the normal writing, aside from Quran, Shadda with Kasra is written above the letter and the Kasra is under Shadda like what you see right now. In Quran, the Shadda is above the letter but Kasra is also under the letter. I hope this is something uh, you can understand and actually if you made a mistake in this, or if you forgot it, it is not a big deal for you because this is special in Quran. So, uh, it is not a rule that, that you will be asked for, by the way. So, it's, it's normal thing. I just, I thought I would mention something like that. So, if any of you reading Quran, you would say, why in Shadda with Kasra it's written like this. Now, let's get some examples that clarifies Shadda. We will start with Shadda with Fatha. I will actually, in the sake of reading, I will give you two letter words. Not big word because you wouldn't be able to read it maybe, but we'll just get two letters. And by the way, reading two letters equals reading many letters. As we said, Arabic is a 100% phonetic language. Let's start. This word. Yes. And by the way, it's in Quran, in Yusuf Surah. And this word. Madda. And this word. Yes, that's what we take today. Shadda. But as you see here, Shadda here is a verb. But the one with Ta Marbuta, the other one which is this, it's a noun. And this is something we will take after we finish Shadda. We will take Ta Marbuta as a separate lesson because it's very important. Okay. This word. Sadda. And this one, Adda. And this one, Malla. And this one, Farra. And this one, Dessa. And this one, Marra. Okay, let's take some words with Dhamma. This one. Suttu. By the way, it doesn't have meaning. This one. Surru. And this one. Hakku. And this one. Saddu. And this one. Farru. And this one. Mallu. The same words as before could be changed. And then we could add Dhamma easily. And the same happens with Kasra. So let's go to Kasra. This one here. Malli. And this one. Anni. And this one. 
سدي and this one عدي and this one إني and this one ردي actually some of those sounds are normal words with meanings and some of them just are for the sake of pronunciation and actually that's what I care of pronunciation the meaning is not of a big importance for you right now because it is not your language and by time you will get it so when you start to discuss real language not just reading you can consider understanding meaning but right now you don't have to pay much attention to the meaning if you need it, it's okay if you don't there is no problem I guess the lesson for today is not that much hard I, I guess it explains itself and I also believe that the more we explain things the more that we give in your mind how hard it is that doesn't mean that we have to underestimate things no we give complete clarifying examples of shadda with fatha and shadda with dhamma and shadda with kasra that makes everything easier next time when we start it will be also shadda but shadda with tanween because it's normal it came with fatha with dhamma with kasra it will come with tanween fatha tanween dhamma tanween kasra that's what we're going to take next time at the beginning of next time's lesson we're going to have as usual exercise that make us understand shadda more until we meet in the next exercise, I wish you had a very good class. Until I see you another time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.